So this is change of bases. We're going to start off with an example. Okay, so our first question is we're going to convert this vector, which is in a, the standard bases, in terms of the new vector, the new bases. And then we want to be able to see if we can actually write out a formula to convert any vector that's in standard bases to a new bases. So let's work on our first equation. So we remember from two videos ago, we were able to convert a vector that's in standard bases to a new basis, writing it as a linear combination. And it turned out that those constants, writing it as a linear combination, was my new vector. So let's do that. We write it as a linear combination of our new bases. One, two, two, one. And that will be my new bases. So to solve for that new bases, we do know that these are linearly independent because it's given to be a basis. So we can just take the inverse of both sides. So we're going to left multiply both, both sides of the inverse. This becomes i, and then i times that. We have isolated this. So let's find the inverse. So this is our inverse. So we just multiply these two matrices. Looks like we get 2 thirds for the top one and negative 1 third for the bottom. So there's our answer. Same setup as above. Set up your linear combination of the bases, the new bases. So we know that'll get canceled. And here's the formula in general. We're going to call this the transformation matrix from S to B, the transformation matrix from the standard bases to a new bases, which happens to be our inverse in there. But there'll be a, and this is a matrix, times my vector in S is equal, equal to our new vector in basis B. Remember, it's going from S. We multiply the vector from S to find the new vector in terms of B. And this is our formula that we've generated. And this converts standard to C1, C2. The C's are from the linear combination of our bases. Okay, so how do we find this transformation matrix? So we found the inverse and we did it. So we did found, this was our old bases. It's going from, of course this was our standard bases. We're converting from standard bases to our new bases. And the formula we get from this is again, this is our transformation matrix converted, converting to a new ba matrix. And then that's a matrix, our transformation matrix, times the vector from the standard equals a vector from the new. Let's put that on the outside. So our note here though, and we saw it from above, this is what a standard base C looks like in R2. And of course it'll be I, J, and K for R3. My second note, is this formula works for converting two different bases, not standard. So here's what that looks like. We can convert from B1 to B2, and it's the same thing. So this will be a vector. It has to be from this vector, from B1. You're converting from a vector from B1 to B2. I want to caution you. If B1 is not the standard basis, this needs to be a vector 
converted to our new basis, basis one, before using the formula. So now let's work out an example. Okay, so our first question is to find the transformation matrix going from B1 to B2. So remember, it's pretty much backwards. This is going from B1 to B2. You want B1 here, because that's the old, and we want the new one here. So we have to augment those two bases. So I started, since the constant was first, I started with the constant there at the top. You can certainly have these rows exchanged. Clearly we're allowed to exchange rows, so you can see we can do it either way. You should get the same answer. You just won't be able to follow the work along. So either way is correct. Just make sure you don't do six one that way. That's a common mistake. So our algorithm says to make this a one next, or actually first. I could divide everything by two. I'll have a fraction there. It'll work if we follow our algorithm. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a one there I think that'll work out too. I'm going to zero this out because I don't have to use fractions, and then I'll be able to divide by two in my last step. So we found our transformation matrix from B1 to B2. We're going to write 3 plus 7x in terms of B1, and then we're going to use the transformation matrix to write that in terms of B2. So it doesn't say to use the transformation matrix because we don't have a transformation to convert to B1. This converts to B2, so that'll be part C. Of course, you can find the other transformation matrix and do it that way, but we're going to just do it just for a single vector. We're going to do it the way we did in the last video, two videos ago. So this is my bases from B1, if you want to remember, 6, 1, 10, 2. So we can go ahead and use Kramer's. Okay, we found our constants. That's our standard, and that's our B1. Make sure we label it appropriately. Now part three. So let's write out the formula first. So we have the formula B1 to B2, transformation we found up there, times my vector and B1. It's got to be from B1, and it's converting to B2. And my B1, it's right here. Again, make sure we don't use 3, 7. We're converting this, but that's in standard. And that's why I gave us the extra step so you can see we need to use our new converted matrix to B1. has to be B1. And we get, we just multiply these two. This to this. Dot product this with this. I'm going to do it on the side. Give myself a little bit of room here. And you can do the work to get that, just fractions. You can check that. My next one will be 1 half times this. Minus 16 plus 39 halves, find a common denominator. Now our last problem, number four, is check number three. So a couple ways we can do this, but I think the way I'm going to choose is I'm going to see if this, if I want to convert, I want to convert it to standard. We already know this converted to standard is 3 sevenths. We just did that work. This will make us go for full circle. So to go back to standard, remember, this is the C1, C2, okay? So basically, our C1, C2 
is those two. It's minus 15 fourths of this basis, B2. My basis B2 is right here. Yep, that's our standard basis. So we've checked it. I would see, say a common mistake in this problem would be getting these two mixed up. So if it doesn't work out, make sure that you set this up right. So one last note, if we have B1 and B2, and we have a transformation matrix from B1 to B2, we can also, of course, find a transformation matrix going the other way around from B2 to B1. And what you'll find is that the two transformation matrices are inverses of each other. So we found in the last problem, that was our transformation matrix going from B1 to B2. So now let's find the transformation matrix going from B2 to B1. We're gonna swap the rows so we have our one up here. So here we have it. That is my T of B2 to B1. Since this is my B2, this is my B1. Remember, they're, they're backwards from this direction. And so let's check it. Let's write that out first. So our formula, our transformation matrix, times a vector from B2 right here. And we'll get a vector to B1. Since we just found a vector from B2 on our last example, we'll use that one in our transformation matrix. Let's multiply that out. And that is our vector that we got above from B1. And we know our standard vector for both of these is 3, 7. Okay, that's it for today. Have a good day.